Well, thank you. I have my notes here. So um, good morning. Thanks for, for coming to attending this talk. Uh, my name is Victor Jaques. I work for Igalia, an employee-owned company based in Spain. So we are spread among the world. Uh, we work on graphic stack from the kernel up to Mesa and the light libraries. We do multimedia. We are the main contributors of GStreamer. We do compilers, mainly JavaScript and LLVM. But our bulk of the business is web browsers. We are the top, uh, the second biggest contributor in Blink and well, Chromium and, and WebKit, behind Google and, and Apple, obviously. And um, we are a major player in, in Gecko also. Well, personally, myself, I'm a GStreamer maintainer and a WebKit uh, committer for the multimedia stack for the GTK and WE, WP ports. WP is a web engine oriented for embedded and it's installed in millions of set of devices and other appliances. As a side note, hopefully for future vulcanized events, we could increase the gender diversity of the speakers uh, so we can grasp a better uh, view of, of how the Vulcan is used and, and, and deploying in the world. Now, okay. Well, the purpose of this talk is to share with you the experience of uh, adopting the Vulcan bit extensions in GStreamer on FFmpeg. It's fairly to say that they are the biggest uh, open source multimedia frameworks. Uh, for those who are not familiar with GStreamer, which said it's a set of libraries for multimedia application development based on the pipes and filter pattern, while FFmpeg is a monolithic multimedia Swiss knife. To say it in a way. I'm not a contributor of FFmpeg, but I do follow it. And I'm, lately, I'm a huge fan of Lean, who has been doing the, an impressive work with the implementing Vulkan in FFmpeg. Uh, uh, and finally, we, if we have time, we show some 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 demos if the if the Morpheus law allows. Well, uh, as a, regard to the Vulkan Video API, um, I could say, in my opinion, it's a semi-stateless video processing API. Uh, back in the days, video processing was stateful. That is mean that it was a black box. You put inside, you, know, you push uh, bitstream and you receive uh, raw frames. But um, that's not, wasn't at the end a good idea because it can be risky in terms of hardware and it costly in terms of, 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 for example, kernel operations. So nowadays, all the, all, most of the video processing APIs are uh, stateless. This means that you have provided by each frame all the work, all what is needed, to, to be processed. So basically, the application must to handle the state of the stream processing. Mm. Um, so by, by, well, by basically, I would say that uh, it, the Vulkan API is very low level. It, it means that you have to uh, specify what are the resources that you're going to use, the memory, the devices, or what, you go, what are you going to use in for for the for the stream processing in other APIs, stellar APIs, you don't have to to worry about that. So this is very fine, and also this is very fine grained to mean that every vendor can choose for different ways to process uh, the, the the stream. That's something that was explained by Tony that AMD can do something for the uh, DPV, NVIDIA, and other things. So if you want to to implement a generic uh, Video processing using Vulkan, you have to uh, recognize what what the hardware asks to you to do and and implement it, of course. And uh, uh, and also, well, uh, the, the the API is is, is very verbose. You have to specify another, another a lot of things, and um, and the, and the, and the specification is huge. <laughs> so I'm not a a, a Vulkan developer by myself. I just started for my part-time last year, and still I cannot process the whole spec yet. Uh, so, uh, 
just this is we're going to start now with the with the nuances of the of the problems that we have find adopting uh, Vulkan video in already pre-existing APIs or internal APIs for FFmpeg and and just remember just remember an FFmpeg internal API for hardware accelerated processing assumes that each frame it has to be completely defined with all the sequence parameters, picture parameters, video parameters, each slice, and so on. This is allows them to, to, to the libraries to fix parameters in, for example, flaky or erroneous or strange streams. But in the case of Vulkan video, it's different. In order to limit the, 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 the transfer of data from the hot, from the CPU to the to the GPU, it allows to specify all this, those parameters once because it's going to be shared among the stream or a segment of the stream. Uh, so this is like a mismatch uh, between between the, the APIs. In in the case of FFmpeg, uh, Lean prefer to upload the the parameters by each frame, as as is used in the other uh, hardware accelerator. APIs because FMPEG does a lot of work trying to fix the para wrong parameters. In my case, I added a new API, which is not merged yet, uh, in our base classes in order to post the new parameters every time it's found in the, in the stream. So I can test this uh, functionality in, in Vulkan. Uh, well, now regarding this, uh, the DPV has been my, my headache for many days. Uh, so basically, role is clicking is to reconstruct an image, it might need other images that were already decoded in the past. That's what we call the DPV. Um, a vendor can specify how it handles the DPV, something that already Tony explained it. Uh, right now, there are two ways to, to handle the DPV. Is the output images are also used as references. This is A and B. The references images in the DPV are different from the output ones. In this mode, we have two different modalities. B1, uh, the, each reference is a single BK image, and B2 is each reference is a layer in a common image. So basically, the, the, depending on how your your hardware or your vendor allows and how your stream is constructed, you can choose for one or another. And also you have a generic implementation, you have to uh, query the hardware and decide what to use afterwards. Uh, well, another, another nuance is that, that's, that's what I say that perhaps uh, yeah, Vulkan video is a semi-stateless. It's because we have to, uh, and this is my current issue with GStreamer, is that we have to 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 keep an index per per the whole DPB existence. So that because there is a pair of index uh, slot index and the image, and that's is part of the global state. So the problem is that GStreamer doesn't have, doesn't doesn't keep that 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 index. It just delivers the whole DPB and it's the, the delivered to the to the to the hardware and processes. But we have to keep the slot index among the time. So that is something that FFmpeg solves easily because they they use uh, an array for the DPB and the the, the pictures of Victor are reused in the in the next or the current element. So that's no problem for FFmpeg. In the case of GStreamer. We have a lot of headaches, and you might see in the in the, in the demo. But we are in a step towards uh, solve that issue. Um, well, in the case of bitstream buffers, uh, each encoded frame is composed by uh, beside the parameters that we already talked by the slices, and the slices contains of macro blocks and all that stuff. Uh, FFmpeg and GStreamer internal API for the decoding or video processing assumes that each slice is going to be uploaded at time. But that's not the case for Vulkan Video. Vulkan Video asks to upload all the slices at once for, for, for the frame. That reduces also the communication between the, the, the CPU and the, and, the, and the device, the hardware device. 
but uh, it asks us the application to do a memory copies if we are not holding the whole because you had to, we had to hold all the slices while the parser just deliver the parser and then delay the, the data. Um, Lean for in, in FFmpeg solve that issue using the uh, extension of external memory host. So basically, they are just doing one memory copy to the to the host. Uh, but in our case, you, we have to copy the the slice and keep it around until we push the the whole the whole frame. Uh, and another issue, a <laughs> strange issue with Vulkan video, is that each slide must to be prefixed with the slice start codex to say zero zero one. FFmpeg and GStreamer for each slice just deliver the slice. It so doesn't prefix the, the start code. So we have to manually add the start code before pushing to the each well pushing the whole all, all the all the slices. So each slice has to be prefixed. That's something that is not used by other hardware selected uh, processors. Well, and multiplanar images. Uh, Vulkan is RGB oriented, uh, while the video world is YUV oriented. Vulkan used to emulate YUV with multiple RGB images, uh, which compose each plane of the YUV format. That's not efficient for video. That's why there are new YUV formats uh, were added. Um, for example, this one, the the R the G eight B eight R A to plane four twenty, you know, which maps in the video world to the MV twelve format. Um, but now we have two ways to represent the the MV twelve, uh, and that, that that's that's a strange mapping because we have to specify what in our internal APIs. For either GStreamer and Vulkan, we have to specify the use, the usage of that of that uh, image. It's going to be used by by DPV or by the encoder or by the output of the video. We have to use the the one planner, well, this format. Otherwise, we choose the the two two images per per, per flame. And nowadays, it's solved with hacks. Basically, we enable uh, video. We're going to use this one, and we lose the the the. the the backward portability. Uh, so it's something to to, to be solved uh, to for, for for before merging this. Uh, that, and that's a challenge. Uh, finally, this is the, the last slide before before the, the demo and questions. Uh, GStreamer. This is the case only for the GStreamer. GStreamer have to reg register all the available elements uh, and its capabilities. So the user can construct the pipeline he wants. So she, he introspect the registry, say, OK, this element has this property, so I can plug this element through this element. Uh, and also, it's used by the auto plugin mechanism, so we can choose the next element in the pipeline on the run. Uh, in order to do this, we have to query uh, or to open a Vulkan video session and set the, uh, the the profile to check if the the hardware supported and by a try and error uh, iteration find out all the capabilities there is the is uh, the the physical device and the queue is 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 capable of and register each uh, element that is possible to 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 handle the the the, the video decoding and this has not have been solved yet but it's a an open problem. Um that's it. Thank you. And let's try to do the demo if that's possible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's try to move the screen. Oh, yes. Oh, that's, that's a lot of information here. <laughs> so yeah, like the last uh, few months we have been working together, like to implement uh, Vulcan video into uh, into GStreamer. Uh, we succeed to have like some thing to be demonstrable. Here we are having a, a, a pipeline. So in GStreamer, uh, we are having pipelines with like black boxes. So from the beginning, the video test SRC is like just a source of the video. It's going to be a pattern, like a test pattern. 
and then uh, we can see with the time overlay the number of the yeah the the frame number and then we encode with open h264 we decode with vulkan and we present it with the uh, with the uh, auto video sync so from there we can see that we are displaying something but it's a bit slower on uh, on on google meets but yeah the, the idea is like to demonstrate that now we are able like to decode iframe but we still like have an issue with the dpb uh, handling that's why you can see like artifacts in the in the in the playback. So, so it's slow because we download to, to CPU memory. No, it's slow here is the same speed, ah, but because of Google Meet, I would say. Okay, that. that's why live it's complicated. But even so this is slower. If we present directly the image, it will be faster because we are downloading and copy to them. That's a test pattern, and then we can also demonstrate with a real world video. Um so it's the famous uh, Big Bug Bunny. So uh, I have to start it over. And then, so play. And you can see here, like, we're having more artifacts problem because of the DPB handling still. And But we can start to see something on the screen. It's like, uh, yeah, we, we're going to handle it. <laughs> this DPB. So we're going to demonstrate the other one. Should I shoot down the session? Yeah, probably. And then yeah, keep it. Yeah, keep it. Yes. So in the meanwhile, we set up this other thing. Uh, any questions? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can answer the question if you want. We haven't tried NV for now. Uh, we haven't been checking so much the performance right now because we want to achieve the, the decoding and then like optimize the, the, the decoding process. Right. There you go. No, this is not. Can you speak a bit louder? Because I'm not sure. To you. Can you speak a bit louder? This is going to be. Uh, to gain from the already hardware accelerated decoder, I don't know. Uh, I would say that it's more a question for for Tony. Uh, but definitely, yeah, uh, regarding Microsoft to accelerate the uh, software, we, we are expecting like, uh, something much uh, faster. Just ask a question. So, FMPEC already has a better performance? Yes, I want to show that. Uh, we already done benchmarking with that. Um, now, complexity, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's quite going? complex. Uh -huh. This API is, is not actually meant to be used to try it. Hello. It's supposed to start with, like, those guys have a lot of pain in command. And then you just stream on this issue. You could already use FM Tech, for example. Um, or you could actually use the libraries, right, which you have, like, the, the, libraries. Oh, the library, the way it works is that it actually just initializes the parser to the decoder. You say, give me the next frame, and put it in display. Or you could even just say, okay, put it in display. Then this would be your starting point. And then you start looking at the, uh, okay, for example, I'm using too much memory. Or using, uh, too much camera. I need less, uh, for example, latency and so forth and so forth. And then you could actually start tweaking stuff around. Right, so but no, in general, this is very it's whatever it's like, it's very down to hardware, and it, it's not something like you push it out and everybody starts like doing applications. So you better use the library. That's why we spent all this time, you know, uh, creating libraries and working uh, in the layer to support just the <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. And so, okay, also uh, yeah, but basically, uh, a demo with FFmpeg. Uh, running the Granite library, which grabs the frames from FFmpeg, which are the BK images, and presenting them. And also, it has some, it's a demo job, so you can also do some transformation here and some. 
here and there. Yeah. The we'll playback inside a texture. Yeah. So if I may just yeah. ask your question about the performance. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you compare yeah, but the other APIs yeah. in the market, yeah. you could probably achieve the same frame rate because it's the same hardware. But one thing that you're going to notice is that when you start dealing with presenting stuff and displaying, since things are so in Vulkan video, whatever it comes is a, a white CPCR image called it in the texture, right? With other APIs, you say, okay, I've got the frame right now, I have to put it on display, so I have to use interrupts, I have to think about changing layouts, copy images, and so forth, right? So uh, Vulkan video, in this case, is going to help you with uh, when you download the frame, you're probably going to be on par with the rest of the APIs, but then when you put it on display or going to graphics, you're going to get much less frequency. You're going to use the same cues, you're going to use the GPU synchronous of the window. And sorry, I, I couldn't actually finish your slides too much. <laughs> <laughs> we are merging the, <laughs> yeah, the presentation. Yeah, we'll take this to the bunch. <laughs> okay, so my question is for any of the three um, about 11 years ago, I played around a little bit with us and back uh, for a company that was a little bit too cheap to spend for a big video license. And um, we didn't quite understand the patent licensing model around stuff like NVMC. So we just went on with like DP9, just to not have men in suits show up at our door. And uh, my question is, if I'm using something like who is the person that has to cover the patent stuff? Is it the IAC or do I kind of have to? <laughs> so, one of the reasons. <laughs> Uh, so one of the reasons why we had to do the APIs layers is to keep. So first of all, you know, uh, Vulkan is um, a royalty-free API. So whatever goes into the API, you could use it, and nobody's going to come after you. Now, MPEG standards is not like that. So we spent a lot of effort to keep this stuff separate. Okay. So uh, Codex, one of the reason why we have 264-65 separate STD files or standard files is it's actually away from the, the road for APIs. Now, if you're going to use 264-65, you're going to have advantage that you actually run a, a develop application once and works everywhere, but you still have to obtain licenses for uh, using uh, to 64 and 65. But again, the good news is we work in AV1 now, so very soon you'll have royalty free also colic. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, Kronos does not actually provide licenses for using This is if, if you already have licenses, if you have solutions, most of the mobile vendors, most of the people who use Codex, they already have licenses. All they would probably need Vulcan for is that they need low latency, more control over memory, more control over processing, more control over everything. Right? And you have like more optimal solutions. And also, it's still the same with other hardware accelerator APIs like you know, the API B4L, B4L2 in the kernel, and so on. Yeah. Your toolbox. Yeah. So, in interest of, because I know we're way over time, and uh, we're going to try and cut the next break short to like 10 minutes, and then we'll probably have to eat into our lunch for the following sessions too, unless people can present faster. So, uh, let's take a quick 10 minute break, and then uh, we'll rally back here and get started with the next session. <laughs> <laughs>